Welcome back. Let's discuss the value of this application we have right now. We can create customers, we can read customers, we can update customers, and we can delete customers. We are so good. We've done so much great work right here. Now here's the problem. Nobody can use it. So the value, pfft, zero. No value at all, right? We can sit here and do it locally on our little machine right here in this very room I'm sitting in right now, but I cannot share this with the world right now. We need to build it, we need to deploy it, we need to get a live web server that can show this and work with this in the cloud so others can start using the application I built so that it creates real value for real customers, right? Let's do that. And you have a lot of places where you can deploy an Angular app and there's a lot of different uh, frameworks out there that you can use, or sorry, web servers out there that you can use. You can use Azure actually to deploy an Angular app. You can use uh, Heroku. You can use web, uh, sorry, um, Firebase. There are so many to pick from OpenShift. You can pick any one of those if you want to, and there's a lot of others. You can just try and Google how to deploy an Angular app to some kind of web server. I'm going to use Firebase, and I'm going to use Firebase because with NPM tools that we already use, it's very easy to deploy to Firebase. Step one to do this is that you go into firebase.google.com, create an account, or just use your Gmail if you already have one, and there you can go to console when you've kind of locked in. There's a small go to console right here, and that one, when you go into this page, you can actually create your first project if you don't have any. So I'll add a new project right here and let's just call it uh, Angular on Firebase. Oof. Yep. So that's Angular on Firebase and let's just say accept all the terms. Oh, it needs to be at least Angular is on Firebase. Oof. That's going to be the name of my project. I'm going to create it. Now you can put in any project name that's really up to you. It can also be a lot longer. Not, not what this video is all about. Now I made my array of here and it's going to finish it up creating it. There we go, and now I can actually continue, and now I have my Firebase project created. And this is where I wanna kind of host my application, right? How do I do that? Well, there's luckily over here, there's something about authentication. So you can set up an entire authentication system on Angular, uh, sorry, on Firebase. You can also set up a database on Firebase. You can also set up a storage system on Firebase to save files and use files, and you can also host. We're going to host, so I'm going to click the hosting right here. As soon as I do that, It'll actually pop up right here and it'll ask me um, to get started with hosting. So I'll just press get started and then I need to run some kind of install tools right here. And I'll just grab that command and kind of add these tools. Now these are the tools that's going to help me communicate with Firebase from my local machine. So it's just an NPM install, pretty much meaning that it's a node package management installation. And it's going to be, again, Global, meaning that any project from now on can actually use this to kind of host or send files to Firebase. And then it's going to be called Firebase Tools, which is some tools that Firebase created for me. And notice, by the way, Google are using Node.js again. So Node.js is out there and it is used by a lot of great companies. Sweet, let's try and jump back to our code. And let's just run this command right here. npm install Firebase Tools, here we go. So now the tools has been installed, that's perfect. But I have a small problem because I need something to deploy, right? It cannot understand an Angular application, so I need to kind of convert my Angular application into something that can be deployed on a web host, right? On a web server. How do we do that? Well, we can do something called ng build. That's going to build our entire Angular setup right here and convert it into something that a web server can use to actually start creating a single page application and running a single page application on a web server. So let's just do an ng build and double minus prod right here to explain I want this to be a production ready application I'm building. And let's just let this execute. So it's done, it's created a few files for me. It's created a new folder up here as well, a dist folder. Under the dist folder there's a customer app Angular folder and there we have all the files it just generated. And notice right here, now we're not looking at an Angular app anymore. Right here we're actually looking at a real running web application with no Angular code at all. It's just JavaScript, HTML, CSS. Web app, perfect. So we need to get this deployed to Firebase. Let's go back and follow some more steps. So now we have the tools to deploy, what's next? We'll press continue. It says you need to log into Firebase. Okay, I can log in. It's going to be the same login that you just used to just go into the console right here, right? So it's going to ask you for that login. In my case, I'm already logged in, so I don't have to do that. You're going to be asked to log in, and by the way, when you write the password, it's probably not going to move the cursor. No problem, just write your password, press enter, and you'll be logged in if you put in the right password. Sweet, 
So now I'm logged in. What's next? You need to initialize this as a Firebase project. That makes sense. So let's make Firebase init. There we go. The same in doing with Git, by the way, to explain you have a Git project. I'm going to now explain this is going to be a Firebase project. Step one, what do you want to build? Well, I want to make something to host. I want to host something, right? So I'll select hosting by pressing space. Enter. What's next? What projects do you want to host this on? Well, I just made a new project called IOF. I'm going to host it there, pressing enter. What folder do you want to host? What, where's the code that you want to host with the world, share with the world, right? In my case, it's under the dist folder, slash, and it's under cust minus app minus angular, right? So you have to point to this folder right here, down here. So dist for the dist folder and cust app angular, enter. Here's the first question that you need to be aware of. It's very important that you re remember to answer yes right here because it is a single page application you're building. Pretty much meaning that you won't have any other HTML files in your case except the index HTML. Okay, enter. And the next thing is, do you want um, to override the already existing index file inside this folder we have right here? And the answer is no, because in here there's actually some Angular specific information still, which is just the app root needs to be here. So you should not override it. There's also the name of the files you're going to need, right? So don't override this, that's very important. So you just say no, that's also the default. And there we go. Now it's actually ready to deploy. And let's just do that. Back to our code, uh, to our console right here. It says, do you want to deploy? Then call this command. Okay, Firebase, Firebase, Deploy. Let's execute it. Now while this deploys, let's just talk about one more thing. There's something right here. You notice the name right here, main, and then there's some crazy weird number thingy magoo, and also for the other ones. Now the reason that it actually, when you build, creates these weird names is because when you're working with a browser, it actually caches a lot of files on your local machine. To avoid the problem that it doesn't know that a new file just arrived, you kind of make these files unique for your application. Pretty much meaning that this file is now unique, so if you ever make a change to your code, do a new build, you'll get a new unique file called main unique name JS. And that means your browser will say, okay, so I already have a main file locally, but it just got a new name, so I have to go and grab the new one and actually execute that. But if you've already run the application and the unique name is the same as on the server, on the web server, it'll just say, perfect, I'll just keep using that one. So you'll save a lot of download time, but you'll, you'll have to notice if the unique name wasn't in here, you might have um, some data on your local machine in the browser that wasn't um, the newest data. You might have some code that was wrong because it was outdated code, right? So that's why it creates these unique identifiers and that was also why I put in the minus minus production down here, because that makes it so that it actually creates these unique identifiers. Okay, enough talking. It seems that we now deployed our application to our new hosting URL, which is right here. Click, hopefully it'll start up here, boink, and there we have our application. But notice the application is not localhost anymore. That's right here, that's the localhost. This application is actually live. Live, pretty much meaning that if I still have this running, you can actually go and click this link right here if you want to, and you can see my application running live as well. One more thing, to the people who have used my videos, my series, remember that our REST API has course set up, C-O-R-S, so right now I'm still protected. It, it doesn't allow me to start using this specific site, so we have to jump into the backend and do a few changes as well to kind of start using this for real. Let me show you the problem. If I open my developer tools and I try to go to customers, in my case, you'll probably see a course exception down here. Yeah, access not allowed. And that pretty much means that my backend does not allow this specific site that I just created to access the data. That makes sense, that's perfect. That's a security thing I wanted. Let's jump into our backend code and just fix that. I've just prepared in the backend code under the REST API under the startup file, I've just prepared a bit of code right here where I kind of use my builder to create a specific origin for the course. You can go and check that out in, in previous videos. And now I have to kind of open up for a new route right here, which is a new origin called IOF70 uh, something something, which is my new application site. So let's just put that on live. I'll just commit this and push it. Pretty much meaning that now it's allowed for this new application I just built to go to the backend and get data from the backend. We'll just give this a few minutes to actually deploy because after I've done the commit, it has to rebuild the project on the backend, deploy it on Azure, 
and then when it's done it'll actually say okay I'm allowed to read from localhost I'm allowed to read from localhost 4200 oh I'm also allowed to read from this new site that tries to get data from me there you go there's the data okay sweet now of course in a real production application I'd probably remove these two because I wouldn't allow you to go from localhost because then anybody could could actually go and start messing up my data sweet let's see if it's actually done already there we go, it's done, and now you can see I can actually go and grab my customers now using the real setup from the real backend. Let's just try and go to details. There we go, we have details as well. Let's just try for the fun of it to update John right here. Uh, save him and do the update work. There we go, everything's running. But the difference is, when we start this video, you were working localhost. Now, you're live. You have a production server. This link you just created, you can send that to anybody who has a browser and some internet, and they can start using your application in a real running environment. That's it for this lesson. See you next time. Have fun.